Well, hello there. Here's Max Heller from Max Heller Music, and you're watching Cat Big Studios. So, yeah, this one is called San Francisco Drive. Please. <laughs> My name is Vladimir, we are at TGU18 and I'm so excited to have Petteri Sarjala to join me on this video. If you don't know him yet, you are missing out on so much. This guy is <laughs> amazing. I remember seeing you, there was a Finnish guitar show for a little while, about 10 years ago, I think, even yeah. more. Yeah. And there was this young guy who was just learning to kind of play this percussive thing, he was good then, he's even better now. Yes. Well, you heard him for this part of the video. So, first of all, um, thank you for doing this. Awesome cool. to meet you. It's weird that two Finns meet in Germany for the first time, but that's how it is sometimes. <laughs> and what I want to ask you is how you got started in this, because they don't usually teach this when you go to play guitar for the first time. Yeah, it was a long route. Um, you know, I started to play the guitar when I was seven. I started with classical guitar. Mm. And I wanted to play electric, but there was no lessons available. So, mm. classical it was. And after a couple of years, I picked up the electric guitar as well. Um, learned to play play... Uh, learned to 
play bass as well on oh, the side, cool. some percussion and so on and so on. And in a nutshell, I never got a proper functioning rock band in the end. <laughs> so because of a couple of variables, I ended up playing by myself a lot. Yep. So I started to apply all these kind of different guitar techniques um, and blending bass slapping with the guitar. Mm. And in the end, um, I finally heard a guy called Michael Hedges. Okay. And that, like, he's the he's the finger style guy. Sure. And um, oh, to me, at least. To me, and uh, <laughs> among a few other guys as well. Sure. And, and well, that kind of made made things click, and I mm. kind of understood how. Okay, that's the way. That's the, like the steel string acoustic guitar is the place, the realm where I can fluently apply the kind of rock and roll energy, mm. and classical concentration, and the percussiveness and groove of of slap bass and, and that's cool. African and Indian percussion together. That's cool. Like, are you completely self-taught in this style of playing or...? Oh, yes and, yes and no. Yes and no. There's like, uh, I studied classical guitar professionally. Mm. I studied electric guitar professionally. Um, I have a degree on, on the electric guitar from uh, Pop and Jazz Conservatory in Helsinki. Oh. So that's okay. my I'm, I'm like officially an electric <laughs> guitar player, <laughs> as in, you can tell. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, on paper, and uh, so I got a lot of lot of information from there. But the kind of finger style percussive mm -hmm. things, those I kind of developed on my own, and and they were very much inspired by a lot of other players mm -hmm. and and music's genre genres and styles. Um, the thing is, like, yeah, I started imitating hedges, and that's how sure. that's how things kind of uh, took off. Around, I, I say, when was it? Like two thousand and two, I think I heard him for the first time. Mm. I think that's a really common way to kind of get started on a certain style. You try to imitate someone, yeah. you don't quite do it, yeah. and it becomes your own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I think many people would be interested to know what are kind of the basics of what you're doing because yeah. hearing that song, there's so many things happening. Oh yeah, it like my brain can follow all of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you are a one-man band, like literally, <laughs> and that, that that's the cool part of, part about it. So, would you mind sharing a few of the sure. basics? Yeah, yeah, the very very basics. Um, so um. First of all, some of the drum sounds I do. Mm -hmm. Let's start out with the kick drum. Sure. So, um, easy way to find your kick drum sound. Now, please, if you're going to try this at home, be gentle. Uh, you don't want to break your guitar. I've broken a few. Um, usually, you don't break them when you practice, but if you play live, you get, you know, you try to get yourself heard or whatnot, and you end up playing harder. That's where the damage starts happening. Sure. And also, bear in mind, classical guitar tops are softer. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so just, just a disclaimer. <laughs> so, the kick drum sound. Um, how I usually teach this is that put your four fingers on the wound, on the wound strings oh, okay. and keep your elbow on the side of the guitar so you, are, mm. you got a good um, support. Okay. And then you just bring down your, the palm of your hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like this, I'm not sure if you can see it there. I'll zoom in a bit if I need to. Cool. So the thing is, don't use your whole arm for this, yeah. but it just try to do it as softly as possible and make the this area of your wrist it sort of humps <laughs> the top of the guitar. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and so that's our kick drum sound. Okay, and. Next one, uh, I'll show you a, a simple snare sound. It's essentially just a, a slap of the thumb, of the thumb on mm. the side of the top. Here. And now, don't try to use a lot of force from the, uh, the muscles of the finger, mm. but it, the power comes from turning the wrist. Ah. So, 
that's our snare, that's our bass drum, cool. and now let's try to add some strumming. Mm -hmm. So, just uh, open your fingers against the strings, no, nothing, nothing complex here. Mm -hmm. But okay, let's try to do these drum sounds at the same time. So let's try to do the kick drum at the same time. So you open your hands and do the kick drum at the same time. So. And let's try to do the snare. So you strum down and hit down the snare. Let's... Alright! Now we've got a backbeat. Let's do some variations with the um, kick drum. And so on and so on. Mm. And things really open up when you start doing 16th notes with your strumming. Oh. Now let's slow it down a bit. You can then move around your kick drum and mm. snare drum with more options. True. This would be a double time. And let's do some half time. Yeah, so that's how you get some basic drum sounds out of the mm. guitar. And the fun part here is that you still have your left hand completely free to, to yeah. do anything. Yeah. So, um, basically your left hand can work like um, mm. as you would be a rhythm guitar player in a band. You know, when you play funk or rock and roll, mm. you end up muting a lot of the other strings and choosing which strings actually make yeah. a sound. Right? Yeah, sure. So, um, you can use that knowledge already here. So, mm. let's see. Uh, Those are the bonuses you. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> you'll get after a while. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. cool. So, how much do you think? How much you hit the st like the strings you want to like ring with your right hand, and how much you actually like play percussively with your left left hand? Well, uh, then the technique actually changes a little uh -huh. bit, and um, it's it's a lump of little techniques. <laughs> And this is one side of things. Okay. And uh, well, when you develop this further, uh, what I do a lot is uh, actually, at this point I have to point out, I have very short nails. Mm. And some fingerstyle guitar players they prefer have, long nails. Yeah, sure. And when you have long nails, you can play certain things very easy, and which I cannot really do. And then it's the other way around as well. Mm. So, this is one of those things. Uh, th I have a, this, this um, kind of bass slapping sounding thing. Um, I slap the strings mm. with just normally with my thumb and then I have this um, I would call it the counter movement for this mm. uh, particular movement. So as I go down, I come up, I hit, I kind of ah. slap with my middle finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Can kind of yeah. pick, yeah, yeah. pick out the melody a bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, another thing about it, you many songs you almost divide them to sixteens. Yep. Kind of, and then you just pick like the hits from there, and it becomes a different. You can perceive it as a different rhythm, even though your hand is kind of moving in sixteen. Yeah, it's it's like a, there's yeah. certain steadiness uh, to yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. There's like a it, as I could I've been kind of. I didn't really have a solid idea about this beforehand, but playing mm. like this for a few years, I started noticing that there's actually this kind of dance pattern 
mm. of the hand. Yeah. And and it's like uh, it kind of reminds me of salsa dancing. Okay. Yeah, because you have certain basic movements, mm. and when you do one certain cue, it leads you to the next power. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and these kind of things happen here. Yeah. So there's certain um, certain things that repeat, and then you you know kind of go on with it. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting some really weird background music here. Yeah, there's a <laughs> man. That that that's uh, it's going. It's been going now. It's gonna be. It's been going on for uh, quite a while now. <laughs> <laughs> this is TGU for you people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a weird Nirvana cover band going on. Yeah. It... <laughs> <laughs> we might or may not edit this out. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, that's. That's really awesome. Like, uh, and people might ask, like, we we can see that you have a special guitar, but I'm yeah. guessing you can get quite a lot of done with a regular acoustic guitar. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started out with a regular one. Uh, um, the only kind of really, really exceptional thing you would have here is it's not much actually. Mm. Um, only significant one is the is the enforcing of the top around this uh, area because uh, you hit it a lot. Yeah, and that stuff is not really, mm. um, the guitar can take that, yeah. it's not going to break it. But this kick drum is something you have to be careful with. Yeah. And um, if, you play, if you play a lot, if you play live, um, then there's the you know, risk that something might get damaged. You know? Yeah, you get excited, you start hitting it more. And, yeah. Exactly, exactly, that's the danger. And that's why I actually try to play always as soft as possible mm -hmm. and process my sound through my pedals with uh, certain compression techniques. Oh yeah, so, they so the guitar responds kind of quickly and strongly even without you hitting it like... Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah there's yeah. a lot of actually... I take a lot of influences um, from recording techniques um, like, uh, you know, the way I compress the guitar is quite similar to how drum compression ah, is done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, makes and, sense. And bass compression. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, so you got these, uh, you, know, uh, you know, parallel compression, mm. um, quite fast release, um, so, and also that the attack comes through, mm. and, and these kind of techniques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you actually can play quite softly, but the compressor brings the energy. That's cool. Because the same thing, like if, if you record rock and roll drummers, mm. um, you know, they don't necessarily play extremely loud. Yeah. But the energy of the drums is actually, you bring that energy through the compressors. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, quickly to go through yeah. the guitar a bit more. So you have, yep. it, you have two cables coming out at least. Oh yeah, this, I got like five pickups inside. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, I'm, I'm actually now using only four. That's okay. uh, actually on this recording, we only have two. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, four pickups is my standard setup. At the moment, I actually changed this just a month ago. Oh, okay. So the thing is, I got um, the magnetic here for taking the sound of the strings. Usually that's the, the bass sound of my, oh, okay. my tone. And then here, we have a separate transducer for that kick drum. Cool. And then now, um, these are not plugged in, but I got two transducers over here, mm. which gives you the kind of the sound of the natural guitar mic left mm. and right, you know. Oh, the room cool. Sound. Yeah. Nice. And I think you probably run all of your stuff in stereo when you do live things. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But it was cool, like, uh, Petteri did a show, well, one song show at a TGU party on Friday, Yeah, it's Sunday today, and he, you have this part of the show where you actually play completely acoustically, that was really cool. Oh yeah, 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 you can hear and, what's happening. Yeah, that, that, that's cool, because actually, like, I had one guy, like, when he started playing, he was like, hmm, what's the backing track he's using? I was like, no, he's not using any backing track. <laughs> and then you take the plugs out and walk around the room and get back and yeah, like, okay, yeah. that's really cool. <laughs> So, cool. Sorry for ruining part of your show if you do that every time, but no, no, it's okay. It's always <laughs> it's always a unique experience to do it. Okay, <laughs> I'm that, So thanks for doing this. I think we'll talk about the amp 
he's using because Peter is also a huge Getna artist. We would love to know about the amp as well, but we'll do that in the second video. Thanks for doing this video. Thank you so much, Vlad, for having me. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. It's awesome. Check out Pet Teres Ariola. I will put links down in the description. TGU18, thanks to all the companies that also made this happen. I shall see you next time. Cheerio! Oh, oh.